So with the Asian Swing effectively over with the finish of Shanghai, which is the biggest tournament on the Asian Swing for the men, of course last week we had Beijing for the ladies, which was the largest event for the ladies on the Asian Swing. We head on to the indoor hard courts, but let's go have a look at who actually won the remaining tournaments of the Asian Swing. So starting in the Hong Kong Open, a 250 event for the ladies. Fernandez took out Sydney Akoba, 3-6-6-4-6-4, to lift another WTA trophy, and she got a big boost in the rankings. In South Korea, Pagula beat Yuan in straight sets, 6-2-6-4, to lift her fourth trophy of her career, and that was also a 250 event. In the Jiangju Open, a 500 event. Zhang beat Krajikova in a three-set match, 266264. She got a nice boost in the rankings as well because of that win. And the only tournament on the men's side last week was the Shanghai Masters, an ATP 1000 event. Who be her catch? Beating Andre Rublev in an epic final, 633676, to lift his second ATP 1000 trophy. And he's getting close to that top 10 again. Let's go have a look at the players that went up in the rankings this week thanks to great results. Starting with her catch, he goes up six spots, number 11 in the world. And just knocking on the door of that top 10. Zhang, she went up five spots to number 19 in the world, which is a career equaling high for her. And Fernandez, she went up five spots to number 43 in the world. Slowly starting to climb back up the rankings after dropping down the last couple of seasons due to injury and also not being able to replicate some results. So three title winners getting some big boosts. Players that went down to the rankings... Borna Chorich, he's gone down five spots to number 33 in the world after losing points from this time last year. Denis Shapovalov, he goes down eight spots to number 45 in the world. And Danielle Collins, she goes down 14 spots to number 47 in the world. So some big drops there for some players that haven't been playing recently due to injury. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings. And no change to the top 10 with Sabalenka still on top. Fiontek at number two with Goff at number three. Pagula still at number four. Despite winning a trophy, she still stays there. Rabakina stays at number five with Zachary at number six. Jabur comes in at number seven with Vondrusova at eight. Mukova at nine and Garcia hangs onto the top 10 for now. But remember, Garcia does have a lot of points that will drop off because she didn't qualify for the WTA finals. So expect her to drop out of the top 10 in the next couple of weeks. And with the WTA finals coming up, it could be really interesting to see how this changes over the next couple of weeks. Let's go have a look at the race of the finals because we do actually have a change and that could matter when we make the groups in about a week or two's time. Sabalenka though stays at number one with Fiontek at two, Goff at three, Rebecca at four, Bagula stays at five, but on Shaber, she goes up two spots to number six, pushing Von Drusova and Mukova down to number seven and eight. So there is still changes within the top eight that can happen and that could change things because being number eight, number six might mean that you're in a different group. So we won't know until a couple weeks from now, but it could change things down the track being number six instead of number eight. Zachary's still at number nine as the first alternate and Madison Keys comes in at number 10. And there is actually some injury worries for Jabur and Mukova. Jabur has a knee injury and Mukova has been pulling out of events ever since the US Open. So there is a strong possibility that either Zachary or Keys actually plays the WTA Finals in Cancun. Going over to the men's side of things and after a huge event, there's always some changes. Not at the top though with Djokovic staying at number one. Elkris coming in at number two with Medvedev at number three. Sinner stays at four. But Andre Rublev, he goes up two spots to number five after making the final in Shanghai, pushing Runa and Sidney Pass down to number six and seven. And had Rublev had won Shanghai, he would have actually been at number four ahead of Sino. So big missed opportunity there for Rublev. We also have a change on the bottom with Fritz going down two spots to number 10, allowing Rude and Zverev to go up to number eight and nine. And that's because he dropped a lot of points from this time last year, winning at an event in Tokyo. So... It'll be really interesting to see those guys at the end of the year, especially because some of them do have a lot of points to finish off the season. And Runa is that main someone. So things are going to change over the next couple of weeks for the rankings. Over to the race of the finals now. And Djokovic still at number one with Alcaraz at number two. Medvedev at three. But Yannick Sinner officially qualifying for the ATP finals. After winning in Beijing and playing a couple of matches in Shanghai, he officially is in. So we've only got four spots left. Rublev stays at number five, but he is very close to qualifying himself. Had he had won Shanghai, he would have qualified, but he's going to have to wait a few more weeks. Sidibas stays at number six with Zverev at number seven. Runa at eight, Fritz at nine, and Rude at number 10. But very close behind Rude at number 11 is actually Hubi Hercatch. So with that win in Shanghai, he puts himself in the race to the finals. And with only four spots up for grabs, Runa is really hanging on to that number eight spot. And he has been injured a lot lately and losing a lot lately. So there is a serious possibility that someone not even on this list could qualify in the next few weeks. So there it is. That is the race of the finals for the men. Of course, we already know who's playing the WTA finals for the ladies. We've got a couple of weeks until that tournament starts. We have only a few more weeks for the season for the men. Paris being the big one at the end of the season to give the most points for some of these guys who need to qualify. Only four spots left 
in the race of the finals. But let me know down in the comments below. What's been the biggest shock for you this week? Were you shocked at maybe the winners this week with her catch taking out Rublev? Shanghai did turn out to be a little bit more random, especially because we did have 19 of the top 20 playing. And in the end, it ended up being Rublev taking on her catch. You know, no Alcaraz, no Medvedev. They all lost really early. Even Sinner lost pretty early in Shanghai. And of course, Djokovic didn't play. But there are going to be some changes over the next few weeks with some big tournaments worth a lot of points, not just in Paris, but before Paris as well. But let me know in the comments below. What's been the most shocking part of the rankings for you this week?